Hey guys, selfie style today, we're at the front of my place. I've got a new toy. It is a generator. It's a Yamaha EF2500i, and I'm gonna show you how to break the thing in, and how to do it properly. Now there's a few different schools of thought on how to break an engine in. Um, I'm gonna show you the way that I've found works really well. I've built a few engines, maybe six or seven engines, some of them are performance engines, and I've always done it the way I'm gonna show you, and I've never had a problem. Engines rev freely, they uh, don't blow smoke, don't chew oil, all the good stuff. So um, how do we do it? Well, you're gonna need a bit of a setup here. A few bits and pieces. You can see my big 500 watt resistors, otherwise known as heaters or uh, work lights. And uh, some other gizmos down here going on. But first of all, we'll start from the start. First of all, you gotta replace your oil. Um, double check you've got oil in the thing first because depending on the uh, shipping laws and whatnot in your area, it may have to be shipped without liquids or without oils. So don't just start it out of the box. Double check you got oil, otherwise you're in for a bit of a problem. But if it does have oil, pull it out, stick it into a uh, into a container because we'll uh, reuse it once we finish the bedding process. And you want some of this stuff, breaking oil. I'm just using Brad Penn brand because that's what I can get here in Japan. Uh, any brand will do, it doesn't matter, as long as it's proper breaking oil. It doesn't contain the uh, friction modifiers that normal oil does, um, which can uh, prolong or ruin the uh, braking process. Braking oil will break in the engine properly. So make sure you get some of that. You only do it once, so make sure you spend the money and just don't cheap out on that part. Second is, of course, <laughs> your fuel. You, you won't go far without any fuel. So put your fuel in, make sure the jerry can is out the other side, lid on, no chance of any vapor trails igniting. And then, of course, your fire extinguisher. Always uh, pays to play it safe. So we got this thing ready to start. Now we've got to have our setup. So I'm using three 500 watt lights just because my system here can only uh, switch 15 amps or 1500 watts. Uh, I would like to have more because this is good for 2500 watts, but uh, it'll do, it'll do, no worries. So we've got our three lights here, all connected up to a power board. So they're gonna come on and off all together. That's coming through this thing here, which we'll come back to in a sec and then back up into our, um, our generator, 15 amp outlet. Got a USB power supply here, and that's coming back down to this thing. Now what, what's going on here? Well, we got a triple five timer, and uh, USB comes in here for our five volts, and then two wires coming out. So this is a, just a timer, an, a stable multi-vibrator. A stable, a stable, a stable multi-vibrator. Something like that. It just basically turns on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off endlessly, as, as long as it's got power, it's going to be turning on and off. Now, the uh, values I've selected will give us 10 seconds off, then one minute on. So you turn the power on, it stays on for a minute, then it turns off for 10 seconds. On for one minute, off for 10 seconds. You can see the uh, the diagram on the screen there if you want to make one of your, of your own. It's not that difficult, just a few bits and pieces. And then that feeds into this box here. Power switch tail 2. I got this from Adafruit. They don't sell this model anymore, but they do sell another model for about the same price. It's got more features on the new model. It's basically a, uh, a switch, big relay inside, and it turns on whenever you give it between 5 and 12 volts. So 5 volts comes in here. This turns on and off. Like I said, 1 minute on, 10 seconds off. And that is turning this on at the same rate. So our power from our generator comes through, and it's only coming through when we want it to. Just like manually turning the switch on and off, except I don't have to sit here for hours doing it. That's then going to turn our lights on and off and load up this on a one minute on, ten minute off cycle. Now why do we want to do that cycle? Why can't we just uh, just run the generator with nothing plugged in? Well that's going to cause a very low amount of pressure on your cylinder. And the reason why you want high pressure on your cylinder is because it's going to push those rings this, the piston rings out into the bore and scrape them up and down the bore and wear them in so that they, they can form and they, they create a good seal. If you don't do that, if you don't have that pressure, it's going to glide over the top, glaze your bores, and you're going to have a smoky engine that's not going to create much power and you're always going to be changing dirty oil and it's going to be horrible. So, okay, we need to put power on the engine. Why don't we just leave the power on the engine the whole time? Well, you can't do that either because as those rings are scraping up and down, they're going to be shaving off microscopic uh, shavings of metal, like really small, almost nanoparticle sort of size. What that's going to do, if you don't turn the, uh, the, the load off, 
is they're just going to build up and build up and build up and you don't want that you don't want them to build up too much because they can start grinding and causing problems so by turning the load off you create a vacuum uh, a vacuum condition in the crankcase that then sucks that oil off ready for when it loads back up and then you start scraping again so it scrapes the bores then sucks it away then scrapes the bores then sucks it away over and over and over and over that way you're going to bed that engine in nice and tight it's going to be real real nice real powerful no no smoke being blown no oil being chewed perfect so that's basically the setup we'll run over it again five volt power supply coming into our timer circuit and then the uh, the mains voltage coming in to our switch which is being turned on and off by our circuit around through to our power board and then to our load all right let's start this thing up see how it runs Now, of course, if you're going to be using your generator for heavy loads anyway, like power tools, you know, circular saws, grinders, drills and the like, those tools can become the bedding process instead of this uh, setup with the timer and the lights. They provide a heavy load and they're an intermittent load that's on and off, on and off. You're not going to be grinding constantly for an hour or cutting wood constantly for an hour. So as long as you keep that cycle on and off, on and off, power tools will provide a good load and uh, bed in the, bed in the uh, generator properly. But if you don't have a heavy load, if you're going to be using it for charging phones, a small fridge, powering a TV, it's a good idea to do this style uh, bed in, just to make sure that that cylinder is uh, nice and worn in and it's not going to be a problem. Alright, that run in's all done and we're ready to store this thing away. It's got sitting on the Daisha there, that's a Japanese for a hand cart. And uh, there's a few things we have to do which I'll go through before we store it. Um, I don't need to do them because I'm going to be using this generator relatively regularly but I'll tell you the things you have to do for long-term storage. Now, number one is, when you turn the generator off, don't just turn it off at the switch to start with, if you're gonna store it. Uh, you wanna turn this, the fuel tap off. So that's on, you turn that off, and then let the engine just run out of fuel. That's gonna stop fuel coming from the tank into the carburetor, so the, so the engine uses the fuel in the carburetor, empties it out, and you got no fuel sitting in there ready to go bad or gum up the works or anything. The next thing is, pull the fuel out of the tank. Now, if you're lucky, you might have a drain somewhere. If not, you just have to use a siphon or a pump. In Japan, we got these. You might have these in your country or a similar thing. It's just a, a hand pump, squishy bit at the top, sucks in through the, uh, the rigid pipe and then out through that floppy, flexible pipe. Now stick that in, pump out into the jerry can, and then I can use the fuel in the car before it goes bad, no worries. The third thing, and this is more of a long-term storage, like six months or more. You want to pull this spark plug. This one, this spark plug is sitting here. Pull that out. Put about half an ounce or, what, 15 millilitres. Just a small amount of oil in there. Cover it with your thumb with a rag. And then pull the rip cord a few times just to move things around and distribute that oil inside the cylinder. That's going to make sure that it stays lubricated. It's going to coat the inside so that it's not going to corrode or bind up or rust or anything. And keep all, everything all fresh. On the first start you might blow a little bit of smoke but it's going to burn out pretty quick and it'll be fine, no worries. Better to have a little bit of smoke on startup than to have an engine that doesn't start up at all. So that's pretty much all we need to do before we put this thing away. If your manufacturer of your generator has the option, uh, I recommend getting a cover. I've got this one here. Let's see if we can put it on one-handed. There we go, and that's just going to stop things falling on there and uh, keep everything nice and clean, no worries. So that's ready to go in the shed and uh, we can store it away, not a problem at all. Another thing to um, think about, get some of this stuff, fuel stabilizer preservative. This is just a brand I could find in Japan, any brand will do, it keeps the fuel for about two years or so, so mix it up, this one says what? one ounce per three gallons of fuel, stick it into your jerry can, mix it up a little bit and that will keep the uh, jerry can of fuel nice and fresh so that when you need it in an emergency it's going to be there ready to go. Alright, so that's pretty much all we need to do. Stick it in the shed, wait for a, the apocalypse and uh, we're going to have power. Alright guys, that's all we got for today. Don't forget, got the Patreon, keep watching the videos, we'll see you next time.